Okay, so in this video, we're going to have a look at the divisor function. Now, the divisor function is something that's very useful in number theory and analytic number theory. And this is how we denote it here. It's lowercase sigma, Greek letter sigma, and then uh, a number here, x, which is, I'll explain in a minute, and another number here, n. So x and also n as well. So n and x are both integers from 0, 1 and so on, all the way up to however high a number you wish to go to. And basically what it is, it's the sum of all the divisors and it's to the power of x. So basically what it is, is sigma of x, of, uh, let's put of n, equals, so it's the sum of the divisors of n, and it's d to the power of x. So all the divisors raised to the power of x for all of the divisors of the number n. So I'll go straight into a few examples. So let's go for zero first, and let's go for number two. So that's a nice straightforward example. So what are the divisors of two? So the divisors will be 1 and 2. So therefore, if we use this sum here, we get 1 to the power of 0 plus 2 to the power of 0. And then anything to the power of 0 is always 1. So that equals 2. Let's try a different number. So in the x here. So let's try number 1. And this time we'll try, for example, 3. Okay, so the divisors of three just gives us one and three. And then using this sum, we've got one to the power of one plus three to the power of one. So anything to the power of one is itself. So then this is just gonna give us four. Let's try a different number. This time let's try number two. And then we'll go for number six. So the divisors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6 itself. So now we're going to raise these all to the power of 2. So we get 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 6 squared. Okay, adding all these up, we get 1, so that's a 1, that's 4, that's 9, and that's 36. So that will give us 50. So now you can see how these uh, divisor function is going to be calculated. Now there is a slight variation on the divisor function. It's called the aliquot function. So I'll just write that out for you here. And basically it's the same as the divisor function, except it doesn't include the number itself. So for example, if we take six, so s of 6. So the divisors of that would just be 1, 2 and 3. And the value here is always 1. But we don't write the 1, we just leave it as s. So then that would just equal 1 plus 2 plus 3, which equals 6. OK, so there we go. That's introduced those functions. And then now we're going to show you now some interesting properties with these functions. I'm just going to rub these out now. So, one property we've got here is that sigma zero of a prime number always equals two. So let's work out what that is. So let's, for example, let's pick any prime number. So let's go sigma zero of 37. So the prime divisor, sorry, the divisors of 37 are just 1 and 37. So we get 1 to the power of 0 plus 37 to the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So 1 plus 1, that gives us 2. And this is going to work for all the prime numbers. Next property we have is that sigma 0 p to the power of n equals 
n plus 1. Okay, so let's work, work out what we've got here. So the sigma 0, that's our x, is going to be in here. A prime number raised to the power of n. So let's try sigma 0. So a prime number raised to the power of n. Let's go 7. And then in this case, 7 squared. So what we're looking for here now is sigma 0 of 49. So what's all the divisors of 49 raised to the power of 0? So we've got 1 to the power of 0, plus 7 to the power of 0. And then what's the next divisor of after that? It's just 49. So any number raised to the power of 0 again is 1. So that's just going to give us 3. So with our n equaling 2, so that's the 2 here. Obviously, 2 plus 1 equals 3. Okay, that's another property, and that's going to work for all the prime numbers. Let's just try another one. But this time, we'll go for sigma 0. Sorry, I should put the zeros in the bottom here, not in the top there. Sigma 0 of, now let's try with a different number. Let's try a prime number 5. And this time we'll cube it. So 5 cubed, we know we're looking for 125. So that will equal prime factors, uh, sorry, the factors of 1, or the divisors of 1. That's giving us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The next one will give us 25. And then another divisor we're going to have is 125. That's the last one. So add these all up, we get 4. Obviously in this case, n equals 3. So n equals 3 plus 1, which gives us 4. Okay, now another interesting property we can get with this one. So we take sigma of p, and then it's sigma 1. But this time raising everything to the power of 1, will give us p plus 1 where p is our prime number. So let's have a look at this. So pick any prime number. Let's go for 11. So sigma 1 of 11. So the divisors of 11 are 1, the power of 1. That's what we want here. And add that with 11, that's the only other one, the power of 1. That's going to give us 12. And we know p is 11, 11 plus 1. So let's just write that like this, plus 1, and that equals 12. Let's try one more example. Sigma 1 of, let's try 103. So we've got sigma 1 of, sorry, I don't need to write the sigma 1, do I? So that equals 1. Let's just get this right. 1 to the power of 1. And then the only other divisor of 103 is 103 itself. So then that's going to give us 104. Okay, that's that. Now I've got one more uh, thing to show you now. And we're going to show you that this function here is multiplicative. So what does that mean? So, what we can say, that sigma x to the power of n is multiplicative. Hopefully I've spelt that correctly. Okay, what does that mean? Well, in number theory, what it means is that sigma x of two uh, values, let's say m and n, equals sigma x of m times sigma x of n. So basically m times n will be the same as the two individually done. So let's try sigma 2 of m and n. So pick up two nice numbers there that we can multiply together. Let's try 5 and 8. 
Okay, so that will then give us sigma squared of four, sorry, sigma two of 40. So the divisors of 40, that will give us one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, and then 20, and then 40 is the last one. So nice bit of calculation we're going to have to do here. So we've got one plus four plus 16 plus 25 plus 64 plus 100 plus 400 plus 1600. Okay, let's add these up. Let's go carefully. One plus four is five. 16 is 21, 46, 110, 210, 610, 2210. Let's just check that. Go the other way around. 1600, 2000, 2100, 2164, 2189, 2205, yeah, 2210. Okay, now let's try, let's just up here so we can fit some stuff underneath. So let's try sigma 2 of 5 and then multiply that by sigma 2 of 8. Okay, sigma 2 of 5. Well, the factors of that, that's pretty easy. So 1 squared plus 5 squared. So that takes care of the factors of 5. And then we're going to multiply that by the factors of 8. So 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 4 squared plus 8 squared. Okay, so what does that equal? 1 squared plus 5 squared. Well, 5 squared is 25 plus 1 is 26. And then we've got, let's, let's write these down underneath. So 1 plus 4 plus 16 plus 64. 1, 5, 21, 85. Okay, 85 times 26. Let's just work that out. Let's do it here. Good old fashioned way, like when back when we was at uh, junior school. 85 times 26. 85 times 20 is 170, 170 with a zero on the end, so that's 1700. And then 685s are 510. And hey, presto, 2210. There we go. But there's one example to show that this function here is multiplicative.